So I'm here today with Dr. Charlene Russo to talk about Dynamics 602, Leader, Manager as Coach. So Dr. Russo, uh, to start things off, can you um, help us understand why did you create this course? That's a great question and thank you for doing this, Zach. It's fun to be here. When I was um, working in pharma, uh, I was leading learning and development and managers were always coming to me about uh, how to communicate more effectively with their employees, how can they um, help develop them in, a, in a, a more effective way. As you can imagine in pharma and R&D, uh, the employees are, are well-educated, um, highly motivated scientists and researchers and, and, and clinicians mm -hmm. who um, are committed to um, bringing drugs to market to make a difference in people's lives. And so when they would come, we would talk about using coaching as a leadership style and how could they be effective coaches. And the more we talked about it, the more they began to ask, well, how do I coach? And what is coaching? Is it, is it like a football coach? Uh, no. Is it uh, sports coaching? No. And so we would talk about the essence of good coaching being um, listening, uh, asking good questions, following up and being supportive. And so uh, the more I was doing that, the more it seemed like there was a growing interest in, in coaching as a leadership competency for leaders. And so uh, when I came to Penn, uh, Bill Wilkinski invited me to come to Penn. He was running the coaching program at the time. And um, that's the course I created. And from the very beginning, there's been popular support for the, co for the course. Some people taking it having no idea what coaching is about. Hopefully when they come out, they have a better idea. Um, others um, always wanted to take a coaching course and this time frame seemed to fit. You know how the uh, or dynamic schedules sometimes have to do with um, timing as well as uh, the content. And so the focus of the course was on the leadership competency of coaching and um, how to develop the uh, employees that you are responsible for and developing them on a personal and professional level, whether it's in formal meetings, um, coaching in the moment, uh, having opportunities to um, share your experiences and your knowledge with your employees, but uh, also understanding that as a coaching leader, you're still managing a process, you're managing resources, you're expected to um, have standards of performance and deliverables and meet timelines and fit within the, the system that you're living in. So it's not as simple as just coaching. Uh, and so what we learn in the course is how to change hats. So your hat may be right now in a coaching conversation with Zach, and then later on, you're clearly, sometimes I would do it this way, and sometimes I would say, um, coaching hat is off, and now we're looking at, at what we need to get done. And it would be more directive, perhaps, um, because we have those requirements as leaders to, to produce as well, as well as develop our employees. So I brought that to the course. And in the course, I found that the students were a lot more challenging than the people I worked with and they helped me up my game. And I would be able to take what I was learning from the students and the interesting questions and scenarios that they would bring up and be able to take that back to work with me and be even better at what I was doing at work. Hmm. Ah, that, that's fascinating. And, you, and you, you're right, there is a delicate balance between that coaching and development piece, um, but at the end of the day, making sure that that those results are still being delivered, the business objectives are being met, you know, the, the machine is still moving forward. Um, exactly. With everybody growing and, and developing along the way. Um, exactly, and there's also the, the, um, the need to build trust. And mm -hmm. in that trust building, there's the essence of, of confidentiality. So if Zach is, is my employee and we have coaching conversations, Zach may share something with me I have to be very careful on how I use that information. Um, maybe he's sharing that he's um, struggling with his schedule and, and with other projects. I don't want that to influence the assignments I might give him 
the uh, stretch assignments, the um, opportunities for, for promotion. So you need to separate that and balance that really well. And um, that's one of the other um, really elegant parts of this process. So could, could you give us an example of, of a way in which um, a leader can help develop that trust and, and make the employee feel comfortable so that they are willing to fully invest in the coaching? Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, when you're in a, in a coaching space, there's, um, if you're building trust in a relationship with your employee, there's, there's a tendency to be more free and open in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And there might be a time when the employee might say, well, I'm not sure I should share this, or I'm not sure I I'm ready to discuss this. Mm -hmm. I would always say, well, then why don't we hold off on that? And if you decide you want to talk about it later, we can. Mm -hmm. And that's a trust builder because, um, they would have time to think about it. Invariably, they'd say, no, I, I think I'm ready to talk about it and bring it up. And for my part, uh, understanding that what they're sharing with me about um, what some of their concerns are, are, are offering, offering me opportunities to help them grow and develop. Um, maybe it's, it's helping reprioritize their work. Uh, maybe they're bringing something up in that space that's saying, um, we need to look at that. Uh, is there a good balance what's going on? So there was a, a opportunity for me to understand their work better and, and how they're showing up in their work and maybe what other developmental opportunities they need or what other access to information and, you know, all the things that we need to get our jobs done well. Hmm. No, that's great. Thank you for sharing. So mm -hmm. what, what do you hope students will take away uh, from this experience? So um, the students, what can they take away? Number one, Everyone leaves the class with their own uh, development, their own model of coaching. So I asked them to create uh, as the final assignment, their philosophy on coaching, um, develop a coaching model that they will use. Uh, it's been fascinating over the years to see the creativity, the curiosity, the, um, the inventiveness and the insightfulness of, of students building their coaching model. Mm -hmm. And I've had students come back who have started their own practice or have continued using their coaching leadership skills. And they will talk about the model they created and how they have morphed it over the years and refined it. Some of them will bring the original design and, and talk about how they've changed it. So it's one of the, the more impactful things that students take away, but they also take away an understanding of, of how adults learn, because this is very much a learning process, um, developing and growing in the job. We talk about immunity to change, um, how we have good intentions to make changes and, and how we might be sabotaging ourselves in those change processes. Uh, it starts out with thinking about um, what we often call the, the New Year's resolutions that we come up with in the beginning of the year. And by February, we're back to who we were. Well, what's going on with these good intentions and what's getting in the way of those good intentions? And the immunity to change process helps us understand that. So we, we walk through the immunity map and many of the students, after going through that experience, use it with their employees to talk about um, what may be getting in the way of them making their changes. They also uh, leave with a good knowledge of, of the framework and theories of coaching, but the practical applications. You know, we talk about, okay, this is what theory says, and this is how it's supposed to operate. But, you know, I tried this last week with one of my employees, and, and this is what happened. And we'll talk about that. And so there's the, the um, um, practical applications and identifying tools and techniques and also understanding that there's a lot of theories out there. And many of the students wind up um, almost like a smorgasbord of pulling theories and, and tools and pieces together to create their own model. As I said, that's what they leave with. But they also understand that they're also potentially creating new theory and new processes and ways of coaching. And they love to come back and talk with the students. I always have the students come back uh, either in a panel uh, or as guest speakers and, and they'll talk about how they put these skills into practice, what the challenges have been. Um, we also, in the course, work on our own self-awareness 
and the awareness of the organization. Uh, many times students will say, well, I would love to do this, but the people I work with uh, don't hold this philosophy. Well, you're managing your team mm -hmm. and you can manage your team this way. And invariably, you might have a colleague who might come over and ask you how you're doing this, or could you coach one of their employees because they're not able to do that. So it, it spreads. So I might have, um, I've often had guest speakers come in talking about building a, a coaching organization mm -hmm. in, their, in their sphere. And then as they move on and, and take on bigger responsibilities, how they can do that. And um, one of the years when I was working at Amgen, I was uh, in Southern California, but I was still teaching my class. I would fly back for class. Well, one year we flew the class out to Amgen and they spent two days at Amgen. And without me prompting anybody, they came in and talked about their coaching philosophy and went right to the intranet page of the coaching organization and all the tools and techniques that are there, all the resources that are available to leaders because Amgen is a coaching organization. And one of the guest speakers um, talked about how they uh, created uh, coaching for their sales and marketing organization. And it became such a, a strong program that the number one award every year is the coach of the year award. And so they were able to share that. And so students are, uh, he still speaks in my class and talks about the challenges and how, um, how important it is to do it and how hard it is to do it at times. So yes. I love to bring in um, guest speakers. And one of the silver linings of the COVID um, experience now uh, putting us into uh, a Zoom world is that I'm able to draw on guest speakers now from all over the world that I've worked with uh, who are coming in to speak um, who wouldn't have been able to do that before um, when we had the, you know, the traditional class meetings. So that's one great, uh, one, one good uh, of the silver lining of COVID. <laughs> sure. sure. So it sounds like, it sounds like that this is a very much hands-on class where you're, you're learning things, you're discussing new models, and then you're immediately putting them into practice and then reanalyzing and, and fine tuning and honing all throughout. So that's exactly right. And, and we, we start out in the deep end of the pool. Uh, we don't start out talking about uh, coaching and keeping it in a, in a head space, in a theoretical space. They do it day one in the first class and get to understand what that experience is like to sit there and be a coach as well as to uh, be coached by someone. And then I end the course doing it the same way. And they are all in awe of how much they've learned <laughs> over, the, over the space of the course. And um, it's always fun. We start out in the deep end of the pool and we end up in the deep end of the pool. That's great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Charlene, for sharing. I really, uh, really appreciate learning more about the course and uh, all the great things it has to offer. I, I want to thank you for doing this. It's been fun uh, in preparing for our conversation I, I went through the years of this, co of this course and, and brought back so many terrific memories. So thank you for the opportunity to do that. You're welcome. So uh, if you're ready to jump in the deep end, uh, be sure to check out Dynamics 602, Leader, Manager as Coach with Dr. Charlene Russo. Thanks a lot.